This is Sean Sport in podcast form. Plenty of sport happening over the weekend. And as we know, our WA football teams are stinking. I think for Fremantle, it's a big deal because they'd set their sights, Nathan, on yeah. finishing right, like seriously right up there. Well, and I, I mean, was part of that. I was telling everyone we're going to be in the top four. You thought that w- was happening. It's th- That's the road you're going down. Well, it's been a build for a while, but I think they t- have taken clearly a step Clearly, they've taken a step backwards, but I think they've taken a step backwards, unbeknowing because they, my opinion, mm. that a couple of the experienced players are gone. One of them was Griff, yes. who left, yeah. and he got paid a whole heap of money. But when you lose those types of guys, and then you have the younger players come into the system, it takes a while to get going. Yeah, wow. Um, so, I, 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 th- I th- yeah, the year's just about done. Like, it's just about done. As for West Coast supporters, watching your team get hammered by 108 points and winning three, as we spoke about this morning, no, three out of 33 of your last games isn't much fun. Now, I don't know anything about football. I know. Put it in the news. Um, but I was reading that Simpson has had a year to run on his contract but has managed just three victories in the last 33 outings. When you see it like that written down, that's pretty full on, isn't it? With an average losing margin of above 40 points. When you see it written like that, it's like, wow. So they're coming for him? They're not at the moment. I think the media have been pretty good with Adam so far. <laughs> and the club have defended him. And no, which is great. And I think Adam Simpson is a great stage. guy and he deserves his job and I yep. get that. But how? 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 33. Three victories in the last 33. I haven't seen a That's coach crazy. last when they've gone through a rebuild. And you know, you can only go back to recent times with us here in Perth, having Ross yep. Lyon. In 2015, they fell, <clears throat> they fell off the cliff mm. and then he was gone. And that just—it was a moment of time, and yeah. he—and eventually they needed to rebuild their club, which um, which they did under Justin. They've been able to get the players, but it started a few years before then. But no one sees that out because the losses add up, and people just go, "It's time for change." Adam's a really good bloke, yep. so um, yeah, hopefully it all turns out for him. But um, certainly, you're going to be under the pump. Well, you've got some companies, you know, and this goes in all workplaces that say if there's some bad performance, they still believe in you as a person, right? So that, that they will stay on the board. But this one, he has the pressure from the fans, right? Yes, so it's the people that support the, fans, the club. Yeah. So is that pressure, which is which is greater? Is the pressure from the fans calling for change? Is that great? That, that'll add up. If that keeps yeah, going right. for the rest of this year and So decisions and West Coast can finish, be made for, by that. Oh, 100%. West Coast finish, um, you know, in the bottom two, which is every chance that they'll finish bottom two, then there'll be huge pressure on him from the fans who will just keep gathering momentum. And with that, the media will jump on board and that will become an issue. So we'll wait and see how that gets handled throughout the year. There's heaps of other sports to get into, and I'll just try to uh, knock off a couple briefly. Yep. Sergio Perez uh, won the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. So... Do you actually know where Azerbaijan is? I don't even know where Collie is. <laughs> I was having a look at it today. It's not like right between like Russia and Iran. Like it's right on the coast as well. So not a bad spot right on the coast, but I wouldn't imagine not it being a bad spot. So, sorry, Russia and Iran, not a bad spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get to see a lot of fireworks at you're night. You're right, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> the capital city's Baku. I've never been to that in my life. But anyway, the F1s were there. And um, I was wondering about, you know, when you win a F1 race, do you get any prize money? Yeah, do you? So what happens, Nath? It, there's a prize pool of over $2 billion oh. at the end of the year. Oh, right. At the end of the year, that like money gets divvied sits up, there. Gets it? divvied up. Okay. So what happens is 14%, so, sorry, 900 to a, a billion dollars gets for prize money alone. Yep. The other billion dollars go split amongst the teams for participating, yeah. just being a part of it and their costs. So the nine hundred to a, a billion dollars gets split up. The 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 person who wins the most races yep. at the moment, Max Verstappen, that kind of thing, they get fourteen percent. So you know, one hundred and forty million, so to speak. Are you joking? No, I'm not. You get one hundred and forty. Sorry, mi- sorry, the team gets that. Okay, the team gets that. So um, Sergio Perez is going really well, and Red Bull gets a lot of one-two finishes. So um, the next person down gets about eight percent, and then it works its way down. So the Red Bull team at the moment could stand to make about um, you know two hundred and fifty million. The play, the drivers don't get the prize money because they're on fixed contracts. No. <laughs> but okay, so how much is how much is one of these drivers being paid? Oh, they're getting year? about thirty million a year. I oh, okay, so don't have to it's pray. Not too bad. Don't have to pray for them. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> The Live Golf finished up in Singapore yesterday, Sentosa Island, which I know a lot of WA people would have gone over there and played. Beautiful yeah, I course. did iFly there. Oh, yeah, you like Sentosa Island? Yeah, I yeah. have my iFly licence. So. Do they have the big Lego stuff over there? And 
Um, um, uh, you know what, I've been, and I'm going to say yes. Okay, thank um, you. Don't, no. Taylor Gooch, who won the Adelaide um, uh, Live event, um, also won this one. So it's never been back-to-back that a Live golfer has won a tournament, and there's been 13 tournaments so far. Anyway, so he pocketed another $4 million US. So his prize pool mm. for playing 13 tournaments in the last year and a half so far is nearly so it's 19.6 million US dollars so about 25 million Australian dollars he's won already by switching from the PGA tour to the live tour mate you know what i'm really happy anything the good that happens for him because i'm being given the name gooch and then trying to navigate the life with that like you wouldn't i mean you probably wouldn't align success with the gooches <laughs> the gooch and look what he's done for the gooch line the well gooch. No, absolutely killing it at the yeah. moment and he's going to cop a lot of uh, heckling from the Crowd, no doubt, but 20 million, who cares? Sean Sport in podcast form. We are joined by Matthew Pavlich. Of course, you can see him on Nine News Nightly, um, giving us a rundown on the sport. There's been plenty of happenings, um, Pat, but you did mention junior sport. Oh, yeah. This time of year, Nathan, because it's the winter sport <laughs> brigade, Mate. jump in as his netball and hockey and footy get underway. It is the most busy time oh, chaotic. of all time. Before yeah, sure. you guys get stuck into what you're about to yeah. tell me, which was probably 300 hours of driving and waiting around. <laughs> You know there's people out there without active children that aren't part of any team? But they still have activities across a weekend. Ah, there's some kids out there that don't do anything that's outside. <laughs> Imagine their parents. They're not right, They're not in the car but they might have fuel and <laughs> <laughs> worrying about teammates and Surely there's training. a play date or a, you know. Nah, some... Not this kid I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we all know him. He's no... <laughs> Nathan. <laughs> we, we all know Nathan. <laughs> Would I, would I think his name might be Nathan? Yeah, exactly. It is not. Have a play date on the horizon. <laughs> no, but I think lots of listeners will be out there, Shawnee, knowing that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what your routine looked like, but we had a Friday night. Um, so my daughter, her first uh, entree into footy, she hasn't really shown it's much interest hard, into playing footy before, but I think her mates have convinced her to get a part of this year five, six team. Yeah, that right. The Swanee Tigers um, have, have, have started last year. Drew Banfield actually um, had a daughter last year play in the team, and it sort Willow, of created, yeah. yeah, Willow created some some great um, atmosphere and, and, and enjoyment, and so it's become a, become a thing. There's two uh, year five, six team girls, which is awesome, and they're so enthusiastic, and they're yeah. into it, and it's great. So that started Friday night. It rolled into uh, our son's basketball Saturday morning, eight o'clock. It then went to uh, we had to split, we had to divide and conquer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lauren, Lauren went to Harper's basketball. No. I went to Will's soccer. Uh, and then I went basically straight to the Eagles and uh, Carlton game. And uh, worked or not, yeah. And worked. And then, yeah, woke up and coached the year three uh, Swanee Tigers yesterday oh, morning Jack. at 8 a.m. Um, against North Beach, which was good fun. So our son Jack played in that. And then, where did we go after that? I can't remember. And then we went to uh, our daughter's Wobble basketball, basketball. yeah, the Perry Lakes Hawks. Uh, and wobble. Then, wobble. Yeah. What's wobble? So that's a state league. That's a, like a state well, combined. Western Australian Basketball League. Yeah, oh, I've so. never heard of that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. So I love she, the Wobble um, League. Yeah, she played in the under-12s down there at uh, Hammy Hill, actually. They played Coburn. And then yeah. we had a little bit of a, just a little bit of a break to come back and try to sort some sort of, uh, you know, household duties <laughs> or, or put the pe- feet up for a minute. How put the, the Put the roast lamb on and the veggies on. And then we went to Clement Oval for... Uh, what? For Harper's, um, yeah, so she played at half time yesterday. So, yeah, we, we're exhausted. I'm not sure what yours looks like. I'm not, I'm not asking to go through no, it all. No, can I just say quickly, I can I just say quickly, and this is to all modern parents, I feel for what you go through because back in the day, no one cared if our parents didn't go. <laughs> no, like, literally, no, like, that's right. Literally, Nathan. you would play a sport and you would never see your parents there. You, they wouldn't take you there either. You would have you to ride your bike, bike at 10 at night because yeah. they didn't care where you were. No, and it's now it's all like about being present and being part of all of it. Oh, my God, it must be exhausting. No, you're exhausted. Exactly uh, right there with all that kind of stuff. But yeah, ours is the same. So Sonny's playing netball, uh, netball footy mm. on the weekends, you know, different days. Ollie's playing, Lachlan's playing. Um, Cooper's doing um, stuff at school still because yeah. he's doing musicals at there. But um, anyway, in between that, I had to do the – I was supposed to do the scoring and oh. the and the, um, and the the timekeeper at the netball, but I didn't know how to bloody score. <laughs> you? I'm just throwing into it. Yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm going up to Hayes, uh, Paul Hazeby's wife, Nicole. It's a goal. <laughs> They've got a goal. <laughs> what, what do you do? Anyway, so she handballed the uh, scoring for me, so I just had to be the timekeeper. Yeah. And I was trying to start the game every quarter. I was trying to start it a little bit early. This is on the digital just, clock or this is – just on the stop. Uh, you know those little, uh, it's got those little hand timer things where you just put the minutes in. It's a, uh, it's a little clock. Okay. Um, okay. Anyway, stop anyway, watch. I was doing that. So then Sunday came around yesterday mm. when I went to the footy and I had I was the I was on barbecue. 
Oh. Judy, so I'm doing the so snaggers. You, snaggers. <laughs> you were timing netball the day before and cooking sausages How many, the next day. Yeah. How, How many snags did you have yourself? Did you sneak a couple? I, I didn't have one. I was oh. flat what? out, man. And, and, Come and, on. And, yeah, yeah. There was a bloody line at one stage because everyone's frothing over a hot dog. So um, would you go? Would you go mustard? Would you go sauce? Onions? What's your mix? Oh no, um, I, I will have mustard and sauce, and I'll have onions. Yeah. I, I don't mind what quality a hot dog is either. I mean, the ones that um, the ones that I care like, um, they're amazing yeah, to me. Yeah. And I don't know why you always. So famished. The funniest hot dog that was ever for sale was they had a um, a um, a Pride Fair day down at a park one year, and um, they had a they had a hot dog stand there, and the guy went, oh, you know, a hot dog's like two bucks, or whatever, and said no worries. So we went and got two hot dogs. As he turned around to go and get the sausages off the hot plate, um, he had arseless chaps on. <laughs> <laughs> it was just something really sobering about the purchase after that. <laughs> this is they didn't go towards my mouth too quickly. <laughs> Believe it or not, Shorty had those same chapels. <laughs> 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 Cooking the bus. Yeah. There was a line. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, you know, so I, I, uh, it's a thankless job, some of this parent volunteering stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, <laughs> trying to get over the chapels <laughs> for a minute, but it is thankless. Um, even yesterday, so one of our parents, so we, you know, the Oval, where the kids are playing footy, uh, the dogs are running around beforehand, there's <laughs> dog turds everywhere <laughs> on the field. So one of the parents has gone and got a couple of bags and they're going around making sure that the Oval's ready for our, for our match. So uh, all of that stuff, it, it's parents, like you, yeah. they're volunteers. So uh, oh. um, it's a shout out to everyone across there or out there who's uh, had had to do that across the yeah. weekend. Hey, yeah. We're going to get you to stick around, Pav. So, <laughs> oh, really? Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I cannot have this stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's unbelievable. Uh, more Pav very soon. Sean Sport in podcast form. Sean Sport in podcast form. We are catching up with Matthew Pavlich as we speak. Uh, you can watch him on Nine News tonight. If and you're why reading. wouldn't you, Sean? Yeah, oh, why wouldn't you? Absolutely. Pav, there's been news uh, out of the AFL world with Andrew Dillon being yeah. announced as CEO. He has been, yes. Uh, long uh, awaited announcement, this one. I think everyone for a long time yeah. uh, thought Andrew Dillon was the most likely successor to the role. Gillan McLaughlin announced he was going to step down quite some time ago, and there's been a, a lengthy search for a replacement. Um, I think they went externally. They, they sounded out the general market and uh, eventually landed on the person. I think everyone internally in terms of the industry, clubs uh, and people that work and, and know Andrew and know the AFL, think he was always the right person for the job. But uh, it was, I think it was getting to a point where they had to do something quickly. Otherwise, I mean, there's been some movement anyway within the AFL executive. Uh, David Stevenson, Travis Old, there's some noise around, have already left um, the executive. So there's going to be change uh, because of what's happened. But um, finally, Andrew Dillon, I think it's a good announcement. So is Gillen going to something? Well, this is an interesting, interesting thing. There's been lots of talk across... Uh, the last two or three weeks, mm-hmm. that he may be staying on in some capacity. Now, oh. I don't know if that is accurate or not, but the longer this goes and the more you keep hearing and speaking to people, it sounds as though that could be possible, that he he won't be the CEO of football as such, but he might, you know, some of the more strategic things that get done in the industry, Tasmania's you know, getting, get, getting close, obviously, with the announcement over the weekend. The CBA's not quite done. Uh, AFLW, there's some stuff there. Concussion, there's lots of big and broadcast deal yeah. and media continues to, um, obviously, the deal was signed a while ago, but there continues to be work to be done on those big strategic projects. So perhaps, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but perhaps he kind of, Moves into a different role, yeah. an adjunct, if you like, to the commission and uh, and Andrew Dillon and a few of the executives, new people that come in and, and run football, so to speak. So you don't know what's going to happen there. Mm. That's um, the gig you want because you're left a field. You're not copping any heat from anyone yeah. and then just getting paid. What's the, what's the drop in the pay, though? What, what would he be on now? What do we reckon, ballpark? Well, he's oh, on two millions. Plus. Yeah. Two plus? Yeah, yeah. Yep. They get bonuses every year, stuff yep. like that. And they? bonuses? <laughs> Pretty sure they do. About, about the same as you, Nathan. Mm. <laughs> Well, that was my first year. <laughs> <laughs> Is that before or after? No, I've got no money. Sean's got a lot of money. I don't mansion, know exactly. Mansion, mansion, mansion. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't know exactly what's going to happen. I, look, I think, I think Gil, um, who's done a wonderful job and, and his legacy 
will be uh, significant for the game of AFL, um, and 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 I think he should be absolutely celebrated. I think he'll probably go on to something else, but there has been some talk more recently that uh, it could be that left of field uh, opportunity to, to work on some of the bigger projects. Interesting. Yeah, yeah I reckon that will um, work out well. Or that'll work out well for him. Pav, just before we let you go, we've had you for quite some time. We haven't. I have mentioned- to take this chain off my leg. I can't get out of here. No, no check the other leg. There's another chain. Okay. <laughs> I know uh, I put it on there. Fremantle Dockers <laughs> and uh, the West Coast Eagles. For all our suffering um, footy fans over here, both yeah, teams are brutal. struggling. It's brutal. Both teams at the bottom of the ladder. I just mm. had the ladder up before. So West Coast, bottom of the ladder uh, with one win and only 64 percentage points. Fremantle, two wins and 84 percentage points. Um, we're just doing the maths before, Shawnee. So uh, on the weekend, uh, West Coast get absolutely hammered by Carlton by 108 points. Across the last four weeks, Melbourne, Geelong, Port Adelaide and Carlton. It's a total of 267 points they've lost by mm-hmm. an aggregate, average of about 11 goals. 11 so, goals a so, game. So you're going out getting, you know, on average getting beaten by 11 goals. So, yes, they've got injury problems. But I think actually at West Coast at the moment, it is wallpapering some of the cracks that, yeah. are, that are lying under the surface. Their list, you know, they, they Josh Kennedy retires last year and Jack Redden retires, but they didn't necessarily cut deep enough to some of those veterans. Um, it's a really hard position because they're the ones that have won you the, the premiership in 2018. They're the ones that have been your warriors for a long period of time. And I'm talking about Nick Natanui, Jeremy McGovern, Jamie Cripps, uh, Elliot Yo, so on, Shui, Luke Shuey. Yeah. Um, but it's a really challenging one because you, you do have to make some harder calls to allow um, some list space and also opportunity for those coming underneath. So I think there's some years ahead of pain, unfortunately. Yeah. Wow. And the Purple team haven't been travelling too Terrible. well. Have you spoke to Justin? I haven't spoken to Justin. No, no, I haven't. Uh, look, there they've been... I think what happened in the early part of the year, defensively, they were still rock solid. They were still good behind the ball. They weren't bleeding scores. And then they've sort of gone away from that, trying to move the ball a bit quicker, uh, tried to open up stoppages. And unfortunately, that has meant they've um, bled scores. And across the last three or four weeks, it's been, I think, more effort-based than it has been structural, if that makes sense. On the weekend, fumbly, basic sort of skill errors, um, drop marks and... That just opened up the door for for Brisbane's pressure and then and then goals and the week before against the Western Bulldogs, uh, just their contest was terrible. They uh, their effort based stuff was just not hungry enough, Sean. You you know when you're watching a team, just to the eye, are they on? Are they throwing their body on the on the ball? Are they uh, desperate enough to make a tackle or go for a mark? And and clearly against the Bulldogs, that wasn't the case. So a couple of poor weeks for uh, for for Frio and I. This is the expectation gap that we're seeing yeah. at the moment. The yeah. expectation heading into this year, West West Coast, well, they won't necessarily mm-hmm. make the finals. It's a bit of a throw of the dice. And then they lose all those players to injury and the heat doesn't necessarily come just yet. It might no. soon enough for, for Simo and those guys. But for Frio, it was, oh, they're going to finish in the top. They're going to finish in the top yes. eight. And they're going to maybe even push higher than that. Well, right now they're nowhere near that. So that's why... There is some heat going towards uh, Justin and the club because they're so far behind where everyone thought they might be this year. Wow. Wouldn't they just kill to have a fresh McManus and Pavlich in the team? Definitely not. Fresh one. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely not. What do you mean, Sean? Fresh undercut. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm all about that. Full of beans. How how is your body? Because I've had the sorest back the last... Um, week or so, I've been hobbling. Like yesterday, because when you're coaching your yeah. threes, you're actually yeah. out there with them and trying to instruct them and help them. You know, just basically stuff, get off the mark and yeah, yeah, spread yeah. out and back in. I could hardly move yesterday in this year three match. Right? <laughs> I'm uh, living off Naperson 500s at the moment yeah. every day. But um, oh, got to join Pilates. Now we had a, we had a talk about Nathan was always talking about. Um, I thought Pilates used to. When I first heard of Pilates, I thought it was spelling out the alphabet using your body. <laughs> you've like, got, you've got no, we, we, so like, Lauren's a, a physio. Lauren's a, a Pilates instructor, and we've got a reformer and a bit of a setup at home. So get back we're into it. very well. No, I I am. Um, it's just when you're that sore, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even do Pilates. I can't touch my toes. I can't stand up. I can't do any of it. That's it. I can only touch my knees. Honestly, it's, uh, oh. it's painful at the moment. Good on you, Pav. Thanks Good for on coming you guys. We'll see you next you. week. You can now leave. Sean Sport is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.